Recently, YouTuber Hello Future Me released a video entitled The Rings of Power is a Disappointment, Here's Why. Partway through, he took the time to also criticize a circle of YouTubers you might be familiar with. From a scriptwriting perspective, Hello Future Me's got some chops and did a perfectly decent, if workmanlike, rundown of the flaws inherent in the Rings of Power, the mystery lacking development, plot contrivances based on happenstance, lowest common denominator obvious answers, the pacing issues, the inadequacies of Payne and McKay, and more. Three quarters in, he went on a major swerve, alleging that the Rings of Power's failure was used by YouTube reactionaries and opportunists, ostensibly to critique its writing, but really to parade their biases and dubious istenphobe-tinged ideology. They are projecting a false image of authenticity, he says, of critics concerned with bad writing, when this is, in his words, an anti-LGBT, anti-feminist Trojan horse, and their real concern is pushing how feminism and wokeness is supposedly ruining movies and television and even society these days. Oh man! Oh god, oh man! <laughs> Trojan! Here's the thing, I'm probably way more aligned with Hello Future Me. As New Zealanders, we have a shared congenital defect that makes us unaccountably and irresistibly brought to a swoon by the erotic appeal of sheep. And in terms of socio-cultural and critical outlooks, we might be reasonably aligned on most things. But where I diverge with Hello Future Me is that I would rather hang out with the noisy and contrarian reprobates he disdains in his video. Because I'll find some interesting and provocative propositions and discourse there, Hello Future Me, bless him, is, my instinct scream, hardly a barnstorming riot of hilarity and bonhomie. And lastly, Hello Future Me is the kind of fellow liberal I'm most keen to get away from, because he is emblematic of the most confounding and exasperating flaw in contemporary liberalism. An inability or obtuse unwillingness to make any distinction, to pass in the slightest, the robust, relatable and decent elements of progressivism on the one hand, and the prissy, strident, doctrinaire, smart-alecky and flaky excesses of progressivism on the other. This is what makes his so-called takedown of the YouTube mob I shoot the shit with so galling. In his video, he recurrently categorizes those folks as reductivist in their takes and ideological positioning. Whereas he, in his sighing disdain for their takes, is also guilty of a reductionism in positing the rings of power as just mediocre or mid, and all the criticism overblown posturing for clicks, and failing to make any subtle distinctions about why the rings of power was such a turnoff. The demonstrably prissy and flaky identity politics infused into that shitty show. The demonstrable indulgences and deficit between on-the-nose modernized representation and quality storytelling, originality and creativity, and on and on. It's just not good enough to sigh and lament the so-called toxic, agenda-driven notions of dude bros, to zero in on their more outlandish or sloppy moments, and utterly negate the fundamentals driving their criticism. I disagree with them on some stuff, but I'm happier talking shit with them because with Hello Future Me, it would be a desiccated experience, because he fails to and isn't interested in making any connection between the critical and rating shit show of the Rings of Power and, to use his term, as if it were profoundly original and classy, subtext. A wider cultural subtext whereby mainstream viewers were watching the first couple of episodes, and while not necessarily able to articulate to themselves in literal terms the crapness and grating against their views and attitudes, nonetheless felt, abstractedly or half-consciously, that this is a show made by flaky people, with flaky indulgent identity stuff, making the dudes drippy and the chicks awesome girl bosses, and I'm a consumer, paying for entertainment, and this is shit, so I'll watch something else. Hello Future Me is also unwilling to allow the idea that the online ne'er-do-wells have authentic sentiments. And here he's wrong again, because all of them are driven by the same incredulity about the present-daying lameness of entertainment. And he's wrong, further, in positing them as dissident to an established norm, when in reality, even mainstream media outlets were piling on about the parlour state of entertainment in the last few months, belatedly and sluggishly posing the questions those YouTubers have been asking for several years. Hello Future Me maintains that the show's utter failure can be attributed to anything other than this. It's certainly true that the show's writing is practically at the level of fanfiction, features the dullest, most derivative and spiritless writing imaginable, tropes, too many underdeveloped and interchangeable characters, insipid dialogue and undramatic stakes. 
But this was a misfire on a grand scale. As he noted, barely 37% of Rings of Power viewers finished watching the season, an almost unprecedented phenomenon. But Hello Future Me could never make the modest leap that I have, conceding there was identity politics garbage and indulgent shenanigans that suck balls in the show and were a contributory factor in its failure. This would be too much of a concession for someone like Hello Future Me because it involves an unsettling of assumptions and bedrock ideas about culture. Progressive messaging in entertainment is, to a certain extent, among many reasonable mainstream people, synonymous with arrogant obliviousness to commercial reality, and the jury is in in terms of cinema attendance. It's evidently true to anyone who isn't a dismally drippy member of Gen Z that The Rings of Power was habitually lame and underwhelming in its representations of men. Alrond is effete and pussyish, Isildur is also oddly unmasculine, fey and tedious. Kemma is also fey and tedious, Elindal is ostensibly masculine, but has little agency and involvement, and frustratingly benign in the context of unfolding events. Arundir is brooding and tedious and uninvolving, Calabrimbor dotty and dreary, Sauron kind of metrosexually middling, and promos. They are draped in pastel woolly camp attire, have earrings and sandals, and chat in a medium of banal light conviviality that makes conventional blokes squirm and roll their eyes. Hello Future Me would never acknowledge any of this evidence as bad in any way. In terms of the chicks, there's a similar theme. Besides the fact you can only drolly shake your head at the unabashed piling in of strong female characters, Muriel, Galadriel, Southland's Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, and on and on. If your content deliberately dulls down the edges of gender, making most of the key female characters into sexless, stoic figures, and divest men of relatable, nuanced masculinity, then audiences just regard the characters on screen as bland, indistinct, and utterly forgettable. For the most part, any of the powerful energies of lust, being besotted, and sensual eroticism are by the by. It makes the whole show sterile. This wouldn't seem to phase Hello Future Me to any great extent. There is a drive in Hollywood to create female characters replicating or outdoing the masculine characteristics they've been trying to expose as just gender constructs. Stoicism, emotional inaccessibility, staunchness, and patronizing social dominance. Most of these strong female characters are kind of sexless and certainly don't have relationships, as if relationships are compromising to their independence and strength. As I said in a previous video, here's the strange paradox. If Galadriel from The Rings of Power were a male character, female writers and critics would almost certainly deride him as an emotionally shut-off, obnoxious, time-warp macho character, who was, in fact, almost a parody of dated traditional masculinity. But as a female protagonist with these characteristics, she is a progressive, empowered character. Hello Future Me would not concede or even explore this. Too busy clawing the air in know-it-all frustration at the vulgar ideological brainwashing and clickbaity ramblings of dude bros, and reducing them to caricature, and falsely herding them all together without distinctions between those who are out-and-out -out libertarian and hard-drinking, and those like the Little Platoon, who are erudite, fundamentally liberal, and the least straight person to visit Italy since Baron Corvo. So, in this regard, Hello Future Me is sullying and dulling the discourse with consciously asinine and reductionist evidence. And for the record, he also fails to distinguish between the editorial scripted content, which he and his viewers would, in my view, greatly benefit from watching, and the half or totally pissed shooting the shit on live streams, where the language is going to be looser and often to be taken with a grain of salt. And yes, their viewers aren't impressionably malleable young men liable to be indoctrinated and become Jordan Peterson fanatics. They, for the most part, can make allowances and distinctions and manage a bit of irony. So Hello Future Me's under-invoking of such scripted material in his video essay also reflects poorly on him, and in fact, his is the evidence you should take with a grain of salt. Another thing Hello Future Me gets wrong is his overly blasé, reflexively affirming approach to representation. Reflexive because it makes no distinctions and is utterly heedless of and sees no issues with proportionality or context. Firstly, as I've also said before, just because a genre of entertainment doesn't feature a certain kind of representation doesn't have to mean that it therefore suffers from a lack of representation. Secondly, representation is great as long as it isn't incongruous. This is a point many of my fellow YouTubers have made, but Hello Future Me conveniently omits this. We maintain that in a show like Game of Thrones, there was plenty of congruous diversity. The northern wintry expanses were peopled largely by pale Caucasian actors, 
whereas the sunny southern dawn was filled with Mediterranean and Hispanic actors, while the eastern desert regions largely featured Middle Eastern or South Asian actors, all of which contributed to a sense of exoticism and a coherent world. In The Rings of Power, like in so many shows like Wheel of Time or Blood Origin, every place you travel, irrespective of region, climate, folklore, or culture, is peopled by the same diverse mass of black, white, Asian, and Hispanic people, which is contextually incoherent and contrived, wipes away any sense of exoticism so intrinsic to fantasy, and looks instead uncannily like the metropolitan Los Angeles the writers see through their windows. Whether this is feebly incongruous and easily rectified is beyond the benignly affirming mindset of Hello Future Me to concede, hence its omission from his video, and doubling down on the coarser little tidbits and cherry-picked clips he included, and consigning any criticism on these grounds to prejudiced impulses by insidiously influential YouTubers who should know better, mouthing off for clout. I'm in a space between Hello Future Me and the targets of his criticism, but I wouldn't be interested in any kind of discourse with Hello Future Me because, in the end, he has nothing especially original or compelling to say in terms of the culture. For the record, the likes of the Little Platoon and Despot of Antrim are far more incisively intellectual than him. His is a bland default of chastising those critiquing modern entertainment without having the impetus himself to make even the slightest distinctions or make any concessions about those flaky, prissy, and strident excesses, even as show, after film, after bomb, after ratings failure follows one after another, and the present cultural malaise. It would be great if he could acknowledge that malaise has many aspects to it.